Okay, in this video on Debaco University, we're going to be looking at crime scene processing, or at least a general overview of the how you would process a crime scene. So starting with the processing scene main objectives. Well, the first is always safety. We want to be sure uh, be maintaining a safe conditions no matter what the scene is. And that's going to vary depending on what scene you may uh, approach or what scene you might be investigating. Also, the degree of knowledge of your understanding of what's going on at the scene. Regardless, you want to make sure you're securing the scene. Uh, in some cases, you might want to be keeping a safer distance if we have, for example, here, um, a car on fire. Um, and otherwise, you want to prevent prevent people from entering or exiting uh, a scene because that's going to include just more variability potentially for the data that you're going to collect. You want to maintain that protection of the scene. You just want to just secure it, but you also want to have someone kind of out looking to make sure no one is unwillingly entering uh, that scene. Your job, next job should be go through and photographing to look at documenting the scene with images, making a sketch, particularly if we're talking um, a scene where there might be a body located. You want to be sure you're taking notes and taking pretty well detailed notes as well. Collecting, labeling, and packaging any evidence you come across, and then ultimately you'll be writing a report for this. So when we're looking at that safety in particular, that safety being first, uh, we're looking at each scene is unique, so be attentive and keep in mind of your own safety. Obvious things such as glass and sharp objects, but there can also be uh, trip hazards, unstable objects. Again, you're not sure exactly what you're entering, so always make sure you're maintaining your own security and safety so you don't become a part of the scene yourself. Then you want to secure that crime scene. So as I said, the first officer at the crime scene is responsible for securing and protecting the area using the crime scene tape and other physical barriers. If the victim is alive, medics should be called and they would be allowed to enter the scene, of course. The goal is not to compromise the evidence in any way. That's why you're securing and locking down that area. If the witnesses are, uh, witnesses are present, make sure they do not leave the scene because you want to get their report before they go off and are lost potentially because they could be great sources of information. When you're protecting that scene, this is a very important uh, step. Anyone who enters the scene has the potential to destroy physical evidence. Uh, often damage may be unintentional, so keep that in mind that someone might be entering the scene to intentionally do anything, but unintentionally they can do a lot of uh, damage to the evidence collection process. Everyone should be excluded from the scene, including police officers not directly involved in the process of the site or investigation. That investigator, that main crime scene investigator, has only a limited amount of time to work and must complete the following of the crime scene. Must be taking photographs, providing a sketch, making notes, collecting document and packaging evidence. So it's a lot to do and there always seems like there's never enough time to get it done. When you're taking photographs, you want to make sure that they're of the unaltered scene because objects must remain untouched until photographed. If evidence has been removed or moved, it must be mentioned in the actual report. You can't just have that kind of having moving things and then assuming that's where it was originally found. That should be evidence and noted in the report process. Any proof of the crime scene was compromised would cause the evidence to be admissible in court. That's really the main thing you're trying to protect and make sure all the evidence you're collecting is able to be used in court. Now, crime scene photography basics. So some of the uh, basics for photography, there are other videos mentioning them in more detail. Investigators should be uh, thought of taking care of photographs in all areas where the crime took place and likely entry and exit points. Remember to include different angles. And as you can see here in the images included, we see the Eiffel Tower presented at different angles. It's important to have establishing medium range close up and macroscopic photographs. And if you're interested in learning more about those, there's a specific video on that. All images should include a ruler as a size reference to help establish the general size of the objects that's being documented. Now the sketch basics, so after uh, photographs are taken, a sketch of the crime scene should be generated. Uh, on a scene, a rough sketch will be made. After leaving the scene, part of the processing phase is developing a finished or final sketch that is precise recreation of the scene. But while you're there, you won't at least want to get a rough sketch in. Uh, all sketches, remember, will need a legend showing where certain items of the crime scene are located and also indicating where north is as well. Be sure you include that in all sketches. General requirements looking at sketches, well, of course, you need to have a title, a legend for any abbreviations or symbols that are used, a compass direction showing uh, at least the northern direction, a scale and documentation with at least location, date, and time, and the creator's name. So make sure these are also present in any sketches created.
Here's some just general sketch examples just to give you an idea of the legend and how things may be oriented. Uh, always want to be sure that you're documenting some of the important pieces of evidence that might be found, entry points, exit points, uh, distances. So these are all very important things to be documenting and including uh, on the sketch here. Now remember we should be taking notes as well, and these notes should include the location of the crime scene, the date and time of notification and information received and who it was from, the time of your arrival and your departure, scene details, uh, which will be more on the next slide, and a description of the victim and names of the investigation team. Again, it's a lot to kind of take in in a very short period of time, so this is why having an idea what you need to include and making sure you're getting all this in a relatively uh, efficient manner is very important. So lastly, looking here at the uh, detailed description of the scene, well, in this example, we're looking at this is of particular importance for physical evidence um, at the scene. And for each item, the following should be documented. You want to make sure you're getting the time of discovery, who discovered it, how it was packaged and labeled, and a description of that item, because these will likely be need to refer to as further investigations are being conducted to better tell the story of what happened at the crime scene.